Welcome back guys to a new Odyssey video and to the new level 55 God Mode build. With this build you will be able to one shot every boss in this game even on the highest difficulty without ever taking a scratch. And there's even a free version included that doesn't need any of those special items. With this build you will be dealing up to 18 million damage when you are attacking polo marks, you will be playing with 90% crit chance, 620% critical damage and you will always have infinite amounts of battle cry. This is especially important because the whole build is relying on the mechanics that you will never run out of battle cry. So it doesn't matter how much health you have because you are invincible anyway and you can even take out level 70 mercs with ease. In the standard variant of this build you will have up to 40 seconds of battle cry which means 40 seconds of complete invincibility. And by just making two normal random kills you can always activate it immediately again. And all this is achieved without sacrificing any damage. We get up to 350,000 damage with a light attack, up to 500,000 damage with a heavy attack, 1.5 million for a charge attack, 800,000 for Ring of Chaos, 2 million for Fury of the Bloodline and 5 million if you do an overpower animation cancel. The range attacks are also more than enough to kill every mercenary comfortably with over 1.8 million damage for a devastating shot and 2.2 million damage for a predator shot. There's plenty of headroom to kill and assassinate even mercenaries which are over 20 or 30 levels above you. And the maximum 18 million damage is even beating any previous records which I had for this level. This is simply the best and most powerful level 50 build I have ever made for this game. And since it is completely invincible it will be easy easier than ever to beat the shit out of all your enemies when playing this game. However to get the most out of this build and to become really invincible you have to know how to use it. Whenever you enter a battle you should first activate battle cry and then activate your flaming attacks ability. Please be aware that your flaming attacks will not immediately trigger the plus 200% critical damage from the typhoon's axe. If you want to trigger it immediately hold down the d-pad, switch to your torch and then switch back to your weapon to get all the damage activated. If you don't activate it manually it will take over 20 seconds before it becomes active. The next important thing is whenever you run out of battle cry you can completely reset the cooldown by just making two random kills. So ideally you should save up a ring of chaos, do the quick two kills and activate battle cry immediately again to minimize the window when you are vulnerable. In some situations when you have no other enemies available it is also possible to just kill two random animals or civilians to reset the cooldown. Even if you are invincible you are still taking damage while under battle cry and this damage is reducing your crit chance and your critical damage. One way to counter the health and damage loss is to use the health gain per adrenaline spend mechanic. This mechanic will almost instantly refill your entire health bar and by making a single kill you will be back to full health immediately. But the method I personally use is the torch glitch. You can simply heal your entire character by switching to your torch and switching back to your weapon. This method is extremely convenient because if you have your flaming attacks active it will also simultaneously trigger the bonus damage from the typhoon's axe. Even if you've already made a previous level 22 build there are some additional preparations you should make. Because at level 50 you will unlock Hephaestus workshop and you should further upgrade your crit chance and your critical damage abilities. To make this build as shown in the video you should go for up to 16% crit chance at full health and 8% crit chance. Optionally you can also increase your critical damage at full health to 60% and your crit damage to 30%. If you don't have some of these upgrade options make sure you have solved the proper ostracas for it. There's a collection guide at the end of every level 22 build. But now let's finally check out the build. We will start with the recommended variant, the free variant will be shown right after this. With this build we have over 50,000 warrior damage for our left weapon and over 200,000 assassin damage. Whenever you make a level 50 build you should always reach about 50,000 warrior damage. If you have a value that is much lower you have done something terribly wrong with your build. Of course a lot of this damage is coming from the Bighorn Bow because the Bighorn Bow will amplify our left weapon damage by a factor of 1.6 by adding all its 2400 DPS to our left weapon. And this 50,000 warrior damage is then also being used for shooting our arrows. The Beacon Bow is a glitched item and the absolute mandatory item to get when you spend your 200 free credits. It not only doubles our warrior damage but also quadruples our hunter damage. On our left weapon we will use Hater Sarper which is a perfect epic sword that has warrior damage, critical damage and damage swords and here we will part the increased battle cry of arrows duration. This engraving is unlocked by acquiring the Titus Fury from the Helix store. 
It is absolutely recommended to get this engraving even if you don't get any of the other items because it doubles the time of battle cry, which also means that you have to reactivate battle cry less often and being less often exposed to your enemies. Hater Sarper itself can be acquired when you do the A Friend They Need quest in Attica. In order to keep the sword at the end of the quest, you have to lie to Hater and don't give it to him. On the second melee weapon slot we'll use the Typhoon's Axe. The Typhoon's Axe has warrior damage, it also has a really nice crit chance at full health engraving and it comes with the insane 200% critical damage with fire abilities engraving. And to add even more damage to our build we will add the 100% damage but health cap to 25% here in this weapon. However if you don't want to like to activate this additional damage every time you can also use the Sword of Axon as a replacement. The Sword of Axon can be looted in the chest in the Parthenon in Athens. The engraving should be the same as on the Typhoon's Axe. It is important to note that both of our healing tricks, the Torch healing and the additional health gain per adrenaline spend only work when you use this engraving. And you don't have to be afraid to run around with 25% health since you are invincible from battle cry all the time anyway. On the Big Hunt Bow you should engrave 8% crit chance because on this level it is really important to get as close as possible to 100% crit chance. If you are sitting at 80% crit chance, you will crit 2 times less often than if you are sitting at 90% crit chance. Of course if you further level up you'll reach 100% crit chance anyway, then you can again replace this engraving and add armor penetration on it. For the armor items we will again use the Nemean Lion set because it has the best engravings of any set in the game and it is very easy to get if you simply get it from the store. If you don't want to buy this set of course you can replace all your armor items with the free items which are shown in the free variant. But to get the most damage for your build, the Nemean Lion set is the recommended variant. On the headgear you should engrave as much crit chance as possible and you should also upgrade this engraving as much as possible. The Nemean Lion Bracers have warrior damage, 60% critical damage while full health and here we will engrave the cooldown reduction for Battle Cry of Arus. This engraving is unlocked by getting the Northern Traveler set which is a free club reward and the engraving is actually still working as if it is 50%. So you just have to make 2 kills to reset the ability even if you use this engraving. On the belt then we have no special engraving, we have warrior damage, 60% critical damage while full health and 8% crit chance. But on the torso we will engrave the 100% damage but minus 100% resistances from Corfu Island. In order to get this engraving you have to travel to Corfu Island, go to the Kolaidi farm, collect the tablet and then go to the northeast of the map to solve the riddle. And last but not least on the boots we will engrave another 60% critical damage while full health. This will give us a total stats of 458% warrior damage, 42% damage swords, over 91% crit chance and 420% critical damage without activating the Typhoon's Axe and 620% if you activated it. For the free version we will do something totally different and that might actually seem very weird to you because we are using a mixed set of items. A lot of these sets have actually bonuses which are so weak that we can completely ignore them. However if we put the best items of these sets together we will get something that is much better than any of these sets alone. Please note that some of these items are Ubisoft Club rewards which will be immediately unlocked once you have connected your game to Ubisoft Club. We will also use the Beacon Bow because the Beacon Bow is essentially a free item. You should always spend your free credits to get this item. In this variant we will have 60,000 warrior damage and 290,000 assassin damage. However we will have much less critical damage than in the previous variant. So your total damage output when you play with this variant will be a little less. On our left melee weapon we will use the copycat sword. The copycat sword has a unique crit chance engraving so it greatly helps us to increase our crit chance without using any costly special items. In order to increase your damage as much as possible you should not go for a legendary engraving, instead go for a damage sword engraving on the copycat sword. If you want to stay invincible a little longer of course you can also only go for the battle cry duration increase and don't buy anything else. Then you basically have the god mode build but only with a little less damage. The copycat sword is of course entirely free and you can collect it by simply completing the really bad day quest done in Locris. Just help all the local people and beat the fake eagle bearer at the end which drops the sword. In the second melee weapon slot you can either go for Hater Sarper or the Sword of Axon and engrave it with 100% damage but health cap to 25%. The Sword of Axon can be looted from the Parthenon chest in Athens. On the Big Hunt Bow we will go for the same 8% crit chance and then on the easier sword we will engrave another 16% crit chance at full health. 
even though Aesir's Hood has assassin damage as a primary engraving, it comes with a Damtress Sword engraving. Damtress Sword is a multiplier and it is even more important to have than critical damage. So it is the best engraving which you can have on your headgear. For the Bracers we'll use the Spartan War Hero Gauntlets which have Warrior damage, 6% crit chance and here we'll engrave the same Northern Traveler set engraving which reduces our cooldown for battle cry. For that of course you only have to make 2 kills, it works still as if it is 50%. For the belt we will use the Northern Traveler's Waste with Warrior damage, 5% all damage, 6% crit chance and 60% critical damage. The torso is again from the Spartan War Hero set with Warrior damage, critical damage and here we will go for the Corf Engraving with 100% damage but minus 100% resistances. And last but not least on the Spartan War Hero boots we will engrave another 16% crit chance at full health. In this variant we will have a total of 451% Warrior damage, 72% damage swords but we only have around 83% percent crit chance with 220 percent critical damage. Even if these values are much lower than in the recommended variant you should definitely have no problem to beat the entire game with it. To get enough ability points to max this build make sure that you collected all the additional 22 points which you can get from tombs on the map. Even if you don't use your bow a lot definitely go for a sixth sense. Sixth sense slows down your enemies, allows you to do frontal assassinations and just makes it much easier to hit your enemies when you are spotted. You should also use at least one strong range ability, this can be either the predator shot which deals over 600% damage or the much easier to use devastating shot which deals only 400% damage. Also definitely go for hunter mastery because that will always refill your first adrenaline segment. When playing with swords getting the charged heavy attack is really recommended, it is actually so strong that it is even able to kill a mercenary without using any adrenaline. Definitely go for weapons master for additional warrior damage and 10% crit chance and also max out your flaming attacks because you will activate flaming attacks a lot and you want to have the cooldown as short as possible. Maxing out fire mastery of course is also needed to increase your fire damage and the fire ability duration. Totally go for overpower attack and absolutely mandatory for this build is of course to get battle cry of Aras. Fury is of course a nice ability if you need more adrenaline quickly and ring of chaos can easily secure your 2 kills to reset your battle cry. If you want to rely on normal healing then you can go for a second wind, of course you can also simply use the torch glitch instead. The health gained per adrenaline spend will actually work for any adrenaline spend, so it will also work if you use ring of chaos or any other ability. In the assassin tree I only went for shadow assassin to get the additional assassin damage and critical damage but if you have more points then definitely go for a rush assassination, hero strike and even for stealth master. In your mastery abilities you should only spend 5 points to get 2% normal crit chance, then you should not waste any points into any of those warrior abilities, instead go for the assassin tab, put 12 points on damage swords, 12 points on crit chance at full health and another 8 points on critical damage while full health. Even if these abilities are in the assassin tab they work for your whole character and they are the much more important ones. Any additional points can then be spent on health gain per adrenaline spent. I hope you really enjoy the new level 55 Godmount build. Special thanks to Grateful Golem and all the other donators and supporters. Please don't forget to subscribe, leave me a like and see you next time.